Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Snowflake Office Hours. Today we're joined by Carlos Ferres, BI Director at ClareCloud, cloud-based practice management and EHR software. Carlos drives ClareCloud's BI and analytics, leveraging cloud computing deliver embedded analytics solutions. He brings proven results to healthcare. I think everyone here knows about the format of Office Hours. It's an excellent way to hear directly from customers and get answers to all of your questions. Carlos will be conducting a 15-minute presentation and will follow it with extensive Q&A that everyone on the line can ask. Two housekeeping items to keep in mind. If you have any tech difficulties or questions, please chat us at the bottom of the screen in the Q&A box. Uh, secondly, the slide deck and recording will be made available after the presentation. Without further ado, Carlos, off to you. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on how you are. Uh, like Jeannie say, uh, my name is Carlos Fares. Uh, a little bit about myself, uh, I started working with databases almost 15 years ago. You know, like many of us started with the good old-fashioned Microsoft Access and eventually kind of like graduated to a more enterprise system with SQL Server and, and ETO tools like Pentaho. So today, Snowflake uh, asked us, CareCloud, to share a little bit about our experiences uh, with our migration from our previous state to our current state with Snowflake. So we put together this 15-minute presentation to kind of explain our before and after. So a little bit of housekeeping first. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about CareCloud. Like GD mentioned, CareCloud, here at CareCloud, we are one of the leading providers of practice management, revenue cycle, electronic health records, and patient experience management for small, medium, and large type of medical practices. Uh, we are Miami-based, founded in 2009, and operate currently in 49 states. One of our core values is you know, innovate relentlessly uh, because we are one of the most recent players in this EHR type of software system. Uh, we have the advantages of, you know, leveraging, you know, the most recent, recent cloud technologies to better service our, our customers. And we are also regulated by the, by the HIPAA privacy rules. So this is something, you know, that for one reason or another uh, usually constrains us because when we go out and try to partner with with someone, uh, they're usually lagging in this regard. They are not HIPAA compliant. So in the case of Snowflake, thankfully for us, they right at the bat, they were HIPAA compliant. So this is something that worked very well for us. So that's care well. So in care cloud, you know, recently the healthcare industry has been going to some sort of transformation. Healthcare usually lags behind technology in terms of adopting uh, new technologies. But in recently, you know, healthcare is making a big push for inter interoperability, which is basically uh, facilitating the exchange of information between providers in a secure and accurate way. So here at Kegel, we, we decided to you know, take a step back and look at what was coming and what technologies were out there that can better uh, position us to take advantage of this, of this coming change in, in healthcare. So one of the big changes that the government is driving is to get everybody to adopt the standard uh, in the way you store and, and share data with, with, other, with other providers. And one of the big pushes is to use JSON type of, of standard to, to come up with these, these better sharing methodology. And so taking that into consideration, we took a step back and we said, okay, what was out there that can better help us manage 
uh, handling big amounts of JSON data documents and, and better serve as a client. So our scenario when we started evaluating new technologies was basically to find the best solution for these challenges. And we, of course, have many of you and other companies currently have, you know, pain points regarding to your current uh, data warehouses, right? Many of you are familiar with, uh, with this type of paper, which is, you know, the performance. We, we a, f a, few, a few months ago, we decided that we were going to migrate our current data warehouse to the cloud, and we did that. Uh, our current data warehouse was hosted by a Postgres database. It was a couple of terabytes, so it made sense for us to, to keep it on the Postgres database which was open source. But we migrated that to to RDS systems. But eventually, you know, uh, if with all this type of relational database systems, you, you, you need to maintain it. Uh, eventually, performance was degrading because we need to, the data was escalating. We needed to build a bunch of aggregations uh, uh, based on, you know, we have some old up queues connected to those to that database that there were the performance was just not there. So the, the natural progression was to just get bigger servers, get bigger servers, get bigger servers. But eventually, you know, those servers were getting very expensive. You know, in the ability to scale, we didn't have the, the options to, to scale this in a fast and efficient way. Every every time we wanted to add more resources to that server, we need to kinda of like plan, scale plan maintenance for Sunday afternoon or something like that, which is which is painful. You know, like I mentioned, low ROI. You know, we were paying a lot of money for that uh, RDS instance and we were not getting the performance we were expecting from it. And, you know, it's difficult to manage same as structured data with those type of relational databases. You know, they are making progress, but still, there were a lot of challenges regarding that. And, you know, data silos, uh, we, we do have a lot of customers that are big type of customers that uh, they, will, they will always like to do their own data analytics. So we were, we found ourselves in a situation where we were doing a lot of data extracts and giving our clients those data extracts and then on their side they will have to have their data team, you know, process those CSV files and put them into uh, their database of choice. You know, little by little, you know, we started getting bigger clients and our bosses say, okay, why don't we just, instead of giving them the CSV files, why don't we load them? into a database and holds a database for them. So as many of you can, can imagine that started to escalate, we were basically doing, we started having a data warehouse for each client. So that was a big pain for us. Uh, the solution for all those pain points, we, we wanted to find some existing RDFS style type system that, that, that can somehow address all those pain points at once. We were kind of skeptical that we were, we were going to find one that actually did that. But to our surprise, you know, Snowflake came in, we did the, we did the POC with it, and they actually hit all these pain points right in the head. You know, we were doing the demo with, when, when we were doing the demo with Snowflake, we actually had a, uh, a batch of uh, files that we were storing on S3, and when the, the Snowflake people were doing the demo, they started importing all those files, and you know the process was taking a little bit long. So, so the the sales engineers they, they just went, okay, hold on, let me let me resize this this database, let me give it more power. I did it right on the fly. And right, right there, and then you know the process finished in like half a minute. It was like five million records that we were importing from Snowflake. So that type of you know scalability 
on the go was really something that had been, that really impressed us uh, going forward with them. Uh, one of the so once we started, we happy we're happy to to report that we went live on Snowflake with 80% of our production processes last week, and it's been running smoothly so far. Uh, one of the so here on the next slide, I'm going to show you that this was our all uh, all that database that we were hosting on on, on AWS. Uh, like I'm, as many of you can see, during the morning hours, we were picking, we were pretty hitting that database pretty high. You know, as you can see in the the 80% ranges. Uh, but we tried a bunch of stuff trying to get a hold of this cost. We try to, you know, kind of like resize these RDS instances on the fly. Easier said than done. You know, as you can see, most of this, these aggregations that we were running in the AM hours, but in the afternoon hours doing normal uses, the, the, the uses went particularly down, you know, using mostly 10% of the CPU of that database. But, you know, since you need to provision these database systems, uh, these RDS databases once and set it up, oh, there was no way for us, you know, we were paying for this 80% CPU utilization, you know, for half an hour of use for the entire day. And that's something that, that, that was really a big pain point for us. Now with Snowflake, no, it's very easy to segregate your ETL processes to one set of, uh, of data warehouses and have our core businesses use another set of, our core applications use another data warehouses that is more cost efficient for us. So this is actually our previous situation with, with our all data warehouses. Now, our situation after we implemented Snowflake looks something like this. You know, we have our current PM and the HRC in our uh, revenue cycle management system. You know, uh, interacting with the Postgres database uh, that we we were able to seamlessly integrate with our Pentaho ETL. Uh, ETL packages. There was some some uh, rework that we needed to go around. You know, with this type of cloud data warehouses, you need to load batches in CSV file as opposed to straight to to a target data uh, table. But that's once you we did it once, it was very easy to trickle on to all the other packages. Uh, we also have our PHR, uh, our systems were also uh, dumping data into S3 buckets, JSON data into S3 bucket that before Snowflake we have no way of, you know, querying or getting insight from it. But, you know, Snowflake also offers very seamless integration with Snowpipe between Amazon S3 buckets and the actual Snowflake stage environment, which with a few clicks of the mouse, you can actually set up a pipeline to automatically ingest JSON type of documents from S3 buckets right into your Snowflake tables. So that was a big win for us after, after doing this. We were able to get a lot of insight into mostly our practice management system, which had to do with customer surveys and all that other type of, of stuff. You know, and we recently started a new project to take advantage of the new type of requirements uh, required by HIPAA in terms of interoperability. So with that prior X, uh, we were pumping data into a Kafka stream that, uh, that Kafka stream was dumping documents into snow into S3 buckets, and from that we were 
we were able to ingest documents into through to subject through the stall pipe. So that was set up pretty seamlessly also. But you know, going further, we there was a little bit of of a latency there. So going forward, we decided to you know get rid of the of the documents dumping from Kafka to to S3 bucket. And so we started looking for solutions to okay, how are we gonna now ingest ingest Kafka stream streaming type of JSON documents into Snowflake. So to our surprise, you know, Snowflake also works seamlessly with other type of you know cloud data ETL pipeline vendors with Aluma. Aluma uh, was able to with Aluma we were able to very easily uh, integrate uh, Kafka streams to be consumed by by the Aluma pipeline, and Aluma is actually one of the the, the preferred recommendations by by Snowflake to process this type of streaming type of real time streaming uh, type of event into Snowflake. So we were able to set that up very seamlessly, very easy. And to our surprise is is everything's been working uh without a glitch so far. Uh, another thing that we were able to accomplish with Snowflake was you know being able the share data warehouse that that they offer was really the the point that really make us take us a borrower and actually go full everything full throttle with Snowflake. So instead of, you know, building, you know, separate extra for each individual client and uh, repeating duplicating a lot of data we were able to grant uh, our different type customers, customer A, customer B, secure access to their data uh, through their their own Snowflake account or reader account, which avoid, which got rid of entirely of the data duplication and the AI extra that we were doing for those type of bigger clients that we had. Another opt another big win for us was regarding you know uh, giving access to users, giving direct access to our more to our power users, direct access to to Snowflake because you know with having the option to segregate group of users from the actual data warehouses that the applications are using. You know, give us a lot of peace of mind in the sense that you know these type of users, are, although they are they are SQL savvy, uh, we have instances before with where or a bad join or a bad query was actually taxing the database to a point that it started swapping memory and actually degrading the performance of the of our entire application. So having Snowflake has allowed us to to give access to these type of users without having to worry about, you know, this type of, of problems going forward. You know, we were able to bring all of the all of our data together in one place. Uh, and we were able to, you know, grant our biggest our biggest customers real time access to the data warehouse instead of more of a daily type of process of batches that we were doing before. So most of, you know, as you can see, Snowflake was really the only vendor that we evaluated during this, this process that actually target and hit, hit all of our papers straight in the head. Uh, and, and we, ever since we migrated to Snowflake, we were very happy with the performance and scalability that they offer. So 
that's basically being our, our, our experience with soft with Snowflake during the migration. Uh, I don't know if you have, I don't know how how far along are you guys with the with the your evaluation, but I'll be happy to answer any questions or any any questions that you have regarding that. Danny? Carlos, that was super helpful. Thank you for the, the presentation. Um, so we do have a handful of questions coming in, and let me just go through them so that um, we cover the most popular questions. So let's start with um, let's start with uh, Snowflake overall, uh, which was the question is what is the main reason Snowflake was chosen over any other data warehouse technology? Yeah, so during this process, we like I said, we we jump from a Postgres relation to the database to a columnar type of databases. So that was a big change for us. And, you know, we we the performance you know before in Snowflake in Postgres uh, for some places were just not there. You know, it was not returning. So speed uh, of of aggregate type of query was a big a big if a big win for us. But you know what really put Snowflake above and beyond other type of data or databases that we were evaluating. We evaluated Redshift, we evaluated BigQuery, we evaluated Aurora and Snowflake was the ability to scale up and down almost instantaneously, you know. Uh, any other uh, database out there, you really need to provision uh, the resources beforehand if you want to go up and down. Uh, you really need to plan ahead for it. Like I said, we, you, before we used to plan ahead during the weekend, but with Snowflake, it's just uh, a click of the mouse, literally. And also a big win for us was the use case of sharing data with other customers. This, for our biggest customer, has been a big win because, you know, before we used to extract data, put it on a FTP folder, then have our customers and their data team consume those, those CSV files, load it into their data warehouse. And now, if we can real-time share data with them without the need of, you know, all those ETL processes that uh, require to process all that type of data. So that really was, we haven't seen this functionality with any other type of uh, data warehouse out there. Carlos, that's, that's excellent. So what, uh, what I'm hearing from you is the elasticity um, as well as, as you mentioned, the data sharing and the uh, elimination of the FTP. So um, related to that, I, I got a couple questions about the ELT and ETL process. So um, how did you, how did CareCloud actually accomplish the ETL, ELT process? Was it type two is three? What kind of data structures did you create? Maybe just walk through customers, uh, the customer's journey through, um, through the extract transmitted load process. Yeah. So. A big win also for us was, like I showed on that graph, uh, that, you know, we needed that, that those spikes that we saw on our previous data warehouse and CPU users was because we needed to do a lot of aggregations to get our cubes to perform decently. You know, with no things, we, that, we, we were able to eliminate most, almost all of those type of aggregations. So it really with Snowflakes, uh, we were able to simplify a lot of our, our dimensions and, and ETL processes in that sense that because Snowflake is basically an index on, 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 every, on every column, you know, we have, we have a dimension called diagnosis. That a diagnosis in healthcare could be we, the, the entire population could be like 400,000 diagnoses. But, you know, our, for small type of practices, they don't, they don't utilize all those diagnoses. So before we, 
before Salt Lake, we had to uh, basically create a dimension uh, that was specific for a customer, for each customer. Now with Snowflake, uh, that basically is gone because the, the cardinality is already implicit within the fact table. So going and trying to get all the diagnosis that a particular business entity or a particular practice uses is, is a query that runs in a couple of seconds as opposed to if you were trying to go through your fact table and identify all the diagnosis that a particular entity uses is a query that takes probably 30 seconds with our previous data warehouse, is Snowflake. We were able to simplify that dimension, basically just, you know, give me a, a dimension of 400,000 records versus give me a dimension of just give me all the all the procedures that a particular entity uses. So in that sense, Snowflake has allowed us to simplify our ETL process in a big way. Thank you, Carlos. Um, and I do want to mention that we've gotten a handful of questions about pricing, and that's something that I can take offline with each of you. So um, I do want to focus on Carlos at the moment. So one of the questions that we got specifically to CareCloud was, how did CareCloud actually architect the security roles and access privileges for both internal and external users? Right. So for our internal users, you know, we can, like I said, we segregate them into a different into a different data warehouse or pool of resources to avoid them having to impact our core uh, applications. Right now, we have you can say Snowflake has uh, a, a very robust and elastic type of security. You can do it by database, you can do it by schema, and even you can do it by by I believe table and objects. For our external customers, so they got something called a secure view that you can share a secure view with an outside customer. That is basically you define a key, in our case, a business entity key, that you relate that reader account to that key and the, they will have access to the view, but the view will scope the information specifically to what what that key relates to. So, for example, if we have a list of uh, charge procedures, we only have one table for all, we're a multi-tenant uh, type of data structure, so we have one big table with all, all of our tenants and we have a tenant key. And based on that, when they log into the reader accounts, they will only see uh, the, the records that, that pertain to them. Great, Carlos. So the, for the people on the line, we are right at the top of the half hour at 10.30. Um, if there are people that need to drop off, we completely understand. I thought this one question that came in was actually really interesting. So um, Carlos, if you can take this and we can wrap up. Uh, the question was, what process do you use for version control and auto deployments for data models? So uh, what are some of the best practices that you've incorporated? What are some of the tools that you've used? Uh, if you could just elaborate on that. Yeah, so uh, here at Kaiser we use Git. Uh, I don't believe Snowflake has uh, uh, version control software integration with it, but we do back up all of our of our views, functions, even our DML models with GitHub. And it has worked well with that. Uh, we are also planning, uh, Snowflake also you know, offers you uh, data retention and data, uh, data recovery, uh, I believe, uh, type of functionality that you can go back, you can set it up based on what you need, but you can go back, I believe, up to 90 days based on the policies that you said, to recuperate any, any data that was changed or lost. Uh, I'm not sure if that applies to changes to, to views and functions and other type of data objects, but you know, in general here at Kesta, we use Git and we back up all, 
of our of a code with using GitHub. And it will, it has worked well for us because we we know how to how to manipulate it. Great. Thank you, Carlos. Well I guess you can um measure the success of any presentation by the number of questions that have come in. So we actually have a flood of questions. Unfortunately, we can't get to all of them, uh, but we do appreciate everyone's time on the call. All the questions and answers will be made available as well as the slide deck and recording upon the completion of this uh, session. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a great day. Thank you, Carlos, again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Jeannie. -bye. Bye,